Support for Radio Friends comes from OsteoStrong. Improvements in bone density, strength, and power can be achieved by weekly five-minute no-sweat sessions on their four-spectrum machines. These isometric robotic machines safely emulate high-impact loading on different parts of the skeletal system, which stimulates activity in bone-building cells. Balance and agility can be improved by two-minute sessions on vibration plates. Every session is supervised by a trained coach. Learn more on Facebook or call to set up a complimentary wellness assessment and session. Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, February 17th. We're going to talk a little bit about money today and also how we think of something called group think. And I want to introduce you to John Howe. Uh, good to have you here, John. Good you to be are here, Paul. Book Thank author, you. author, The Foolish Corner. We've talked about your book several times. You also do a newsletter. I do. Uh, right. About money and how to, how to use it wisely or not use it at all. And generally behavioral economics, which right. is, um, as your regular listeners know by now, is the intersection of economics and psychology. Yeah. And today you wanted to touch on group think. Group, what is group think? Group think. Well, the, the, the phrase, uh, actually the word might be somewhat self-explanatory, but group think is the tendency to feel pressure to conform to the kind of consensus view of a group of people. So if we're talking about some sort of group uh, that's trying to make a decision, trying to reach a conclusion of some sort, and there's basically a kind of usually implicit but sometimes explicit pressure to conform to what the majority have already decided is the right decision. Now, this is if you're in a small group, correct? Correct. But then there's also a much larger version of groupthink when you talk about political parties, and it wouldn't, would you call that groupthink also? You know, we could make a fine distinction between groupthink, where we have a specific small group, like you were saying, and something that's closely related called herd mentality. Herd mentality, and that's so what I was looking herd for. Herd mentality, I think, is what you're describing in the political arena. There's actually good evidence that these broader groups influence us in terms of the products we buy. Um, you know, maybe we're all now playing Wordle, which is a, a, just caught on recently. It's a word game that's gotten very popular. So there is that broader kind of um, herd mentality. But when we talk about groupthink, again, these overlap. But groupthink um, applies to a specific kind of relatively small group, as you were saying. So we might think, for example, I think it was about a year ago we talked about law and behavioral economics. So we might think about a jury, for example. And a typical jury... It's not true in all cases, but it's something like 12 people, mm -hmm. and they have to come to some conclusion, guilty or not guilty, or something of that sort. So this would be a classic setting for, for groupthink. And in fact, um, some of your uh, listeners may remember a classic film called 12 Angry Men. It's mm -hmm. an old one. It's filmed in black and white, and it's about a jury. And at the end, at the end of the presentation of the evidence, the jury meets, and 11 of them are convinced of the, of the verdict already. Now, there's one kind of skeptic there, and the whole movie is about how people discuss the evidence and end up changing their mind and so forth. It's a, it's a classic movie, it's worth, but it, and there's a lot of, in that case, there was a lot of ex, uh, explicit pressure because one of the jurors said, hurry up, let's make this decision, I want to go play golf or something, or I want to go see a movie, I don't remember what it was. And so there is this pressure when you're in a group to conform. Okay. But if you know you are right and you believe with your heart and soul that you are right, how do you not give in to that to that pressure? Well, it's tough, you know. In fact, there are cultures in the world that have a saying that goes something like, the tall nail gets smashed down. And so, you you know, if you are the kind of the outlier but convinced you're right, you're going to still have a lot of pressure. And so you have to try to persuade people in whatever whatever persuasion technique you think might be most effective. How does group think uh, fit into how we manage our money? Well, you know, again, going back to the broader herd mentality, there are certain kinds of trends out there that tend to be contagious. And in the last year or so, we've seen things called meme stocks, for example, which are followed by a large number of people and, and who lead to a lot of price variability that's really not related to the fundamentals. And so um, staying away from, you know, kind of groupthink about what the current hot investment is, is probably a good way to go. 
So, you know, whatever the group is kind of doing, you at least might want to take it with a grain of salt. You say, well, wait a minute. Maybe this isn't quite for me. That's right. Okay. Right. So that's called what now? When you well, you could call that uh, more the broader herd mentality that we talked about. You know, again, these kind of general societal influences that seem to influence what we do, even if we're not totally conscious of it. And group thinking also fit into your purchasing, uh, your what yeah. what you buy, what you decide to buy or not buy. I think what your peers uh, are buying and not buying has a lot to do I with hear, your decisions. I hear, oh, this is a hot item now. Yeah. Everybody's right. got to have this. Yep. It, would that fall into groupthink? Yes, it is. It's a type of groupthink. So is, if, if just because it's a hot item doesn't mean that it's a good item, and it doesn't mean that it's an item that's good for you. It may be. Right. But just because it's a hot item doesn't mean that you have to have it. It requires you to step back and, you know, take a deep breath and say, is this really the best thing for me? And that's sometimes difficult to do, especially when your peers are kind of piling into something. Yeah. 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 That that reminds me of when, uh, oh, I can't think of a particular thing, but it, it, several years ago right here, oh, this is a new trend. Everybody has to wear this. Everybody is wearing a, a certain type of shirt or t-shirt because that's what the in crowd does absolutely that that is herd mentality in action okay absolutely so how do we avoid it <laughs> well here's the thing so when i think about i think about a jury or i think you know many of your listeners and and uh, and as well as your guests are associated with business organizations that have boards of directors so that's another group um one way one way to do this even if you don't have like a true believer in in the group as you were talking about earlier you know you can appoint what is called a devil's advocate and that's i think that's a phrase that many people have heard but you could say listen we, we're kind of leaning towards this decision would someone just argue against it you know, in this case that person doesn't have to believe they just have to present a counter argument yeah, so to try would to. Would you be the devil's advocate? Yeah, yeah. I've heard it's, that term many times. Yes, absolutely. So um, the basic idea is it's kind of test. You know, we think we're headed to this decision. Let's test it by looking at the counter arguments. So who wants to play that role? Yeah. And sometimes psychologically that's awkward. So some businesses are now doing something called red teaming, which is the same thing except more than one person is the devil's advocate. So you've got a little companionship while you try to shoot down okay. the ideas that the group is is endorsing. Okay. Is this covered in your newsletter? Yes, it is. All indeed. right. So if you want more information about this, uh, you can uh, subscribe to John's newsletter. It's free of charge. Yes, it There's is. No, no strings attached there. Just go to John Howe, J-O-H-N-H-O-W-E dot substack dot com and sign up for the newsletter. It'll be delivered, what, once a month? Into it your comes mailbox? out on the first of every month, so it's not going to clog up your email too much. Okay. It's just what, 12 a year? <laughs> you get 12 yeah. a year, okay. And if you would like to read his book, the book is The Foolish Corner, and it's available where? It's available on Amazon, both in hard copy and Kindle. Okay. And you'll cover a lot of topics on money. Yes, indeed. All right, That's John what Howell. it's about. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hope you have a, a good year. Pleasure is all. Same all to right. you. All right. We're out of time for today. Something you would like to hear, I want to hear from you. Pepper P, Missouri.edu. Have yourself a nice day. Bye-bye.